To learn about modular blockchains, let's first go back to monolithic. Monolithic blockchains have all four layers built together in one piece, and validators handle every part of the stack. They come in different sizes and shapes, but are often generic, not flexible, and hard to customize. Some are limited by block sizes and gas fees, execution and programming language, bridging and settlement, but what if there's a blockchain that fit just right? Modularity allows you to customize and build that chain yourself. All four layers are separated and can be outsourced. You get to choose your own programming language, framework, consensus and data availability layer. I would use Celestia, by the way. And then, last, a settlement layer. This can be Ethereum or another blockchain or none at all and self-sovereign. So with this modularity comes customization, and with customization comes specialization, and with specialization comes scalability. So with all these benefits, it's time to end maximalism and go modular. Special thanks to Celestia Labs for sponsoring Modular Blockchains Explained. In this video, we'll talk about the basic fundamentals of blockchains, the four layers, execution, consensus, data availability, and settlement, then talk about monolithic versus modular architecture, then the history and the future of modular blockchains. This video is jam-packed with value, so let's start from the beginning. First, execution. This is where the computation happens. Execution is an action that is done to blockchain data and changes the state of it, aka state transitions. First is an execution environment. This holds all the rules and instructions of the chain. This holds your VM, your virtual machine, like the EVM, the Ethereum virtual machine. And in the VM, it has compilers that translate your code, like the EVM lets you use programming languages like Solidity and Viper. Then you have a node which will select your transaction from the mempool and actually execute it to make sure it's a valid state transition. For example, if your transaction was for spending money, the node will check the state of your account and do the math to see if you have enough to spend in the first place. So the execution layer has all the rules for the CPU to execute the transactions and make sure they're valid. Then we have the consensus layer. This is where validators agree on the current state of the blockchain. So they all agree that these transactions are valid by executing them, then they agree on the ordering. That means ordering of transactions like one, two, and three. Typically, if you have the ordering, then you usually have the data to back that up. So transaction data one, transaction data two, and transaction data three. This is why typically consensus and data availability are bundled together. And then the process, or how you come to consensus, the consensus algorithm brings in ideas like proof of stake and proof of work. Once the validators come to consensus, then we go on to the next layer, data availability. This makes sure that data is available for anyone to download information and verify that the transaction data is valid. Data availability has a lot of misconceptions and this doesn't exactly mean storage. So go check out my data availability explained video to truly understand it. Under this category is transaction data, which is typically ordered in some type of Merkle tree. Then finally, settlement. This is the final source of truth. When you bridge any asset to another chain, the purest form of it is is on its native chain, so it always settles back there. You've heard of Bridge Bitcoin and Bridge Ethereum, but both settle and are secured by their own chain, which is why they're often called settlement layers. You can also use Ethereum to check the validity of your rollup, so you can use it as a settlement layer to prove all the transactions in the rollup are valid. So now that you know the four layers, let's compare monolithic versus modular blockchains, starting from the bottom. DA and consensus. Modular blockchains have to bootstrap their own validator set and start security from scratch, while modular blockchains can pick one and inherit security from an already existing DA layer. Then settlement. Rollups give you a unique opportunity to choose which chain you want to settle to. A common settlement layer is Ethereum, but you could choose no chain at all and be sovereign. Then execution. Monoliths are limited in the execution environment already baked in, while modular blockchains allow you to deploy your very own execution layer in whatever programming language. You can have an EVM-based execution environment like with Scroll and Arbitrum, or a Rust-based parallelized VM like with Solana SVM or Fuel. You can have a Move-based execution environment like with Movement. Wasm-based VMs like Fluent and Cosmwasm have an execution environment with features like privacy with Aztec and Phoenix. You can have them for special use cases like gaming or high computation or low latency like Cartesi and Argus, or your own custom virtual machine. With rollups, they let developers design, customize, and create their very own execution environment that allows them to easily create their own blockchain, block space, and deploy their own smart contracts. So modular blockchains are customizable, but an added benefit of customizability is specialization. With monolithic chains, validators are overloaded handling everything. Every validator has to do execution with their CPU, then after that gossip and agree with consensus, then after that store and secure data for data availability, then settlement. Handling all these layers means validators have to do lots of different things, so this can naturally limit their scaling. 
If you want faster execution, then you need to buy a more expensive CPU. If you want faster block times and finality, there's going to be less validators that need faster internet so everyone can communicate quickly. And if you want larger blocks, you need more RAM, SSDs, and hard drives for DA. The validators for general monolithic chains tend to require expensive hardware, faster internet, and less nodes in the network. On the modular hand, if we wanted to increase speed, rollups have a specialized node that only focuses on execution, called a sequencer. If you want to increase sovereignty or connect to Ethereum, you can choose your own settlement layer. If we want to increase transactions and block size, we have a specialized blockchain that only focuses on data availability. And if we want to increase nodes in the network, specialized DA layers like Celestia let you use your phone and participate in data availability sampling. The benefit of modularity is specialization, and as we scale and understand these systems, we want to make them our own and optimize them. Bitcoin was the first blockchain, fully monolithic because it was the first of its time, but we wanted more. And we asked ourselves, what if there's a way to share the application layer? Then Ethereum and smart contracts came along. But Ethereum didn't satisfy. What if everyone could have their own personal Ethereum? And the Cosmos was born. As we understand and scale these systems, we run into complexity. But instead of thinking of this as a bad thing, what if we organize and abstract and modularize these systems? Ethereum has modularity in its architecture like L2s and rollups. And Cosmos has modularity but in its software, like the Cosmos SDK, its modules, ABCI. And Celestia is the next iteration of modularity. It brings its architecture, cryptography, and scaling from Ethereum, and combines it with the Cosmos tools and values of abundance and sovereignty. Celestia brings on the next level of modularity, and it's here to end maximalism.